everybody give a huge round of applause for Ralph Macchio! Hey Cobra Kai fans, this panel recording was sponsored by those great folks over at 80stees.com and they've got amazing shirts to show off your fighting spirit, plus other apparel like hoodies and the iconic Karate Kid headband. And right now you can get 30% off by using coupon code FSCOBRAKAI. Strike first, strike hard, and show your fandom. Visit 80stees.com today. Now, on to the panel. I have entrance music. I always have entrance and exit music. Um, uh, my my co-stars are in the marathon. They're running the marathon right now. No, they should be here any second. So, oh, I think they just they just demand to have their own entrance. Well, the thing is, we have a lot of people here who are attending the very first comic convention, the very first time, and they're excited to see you. I just want to talk about this. You guys, I don't know if you know this, like right after this panel, you'll be able to go out and go to his, and do a photo ops and do autographs and meet, meet with Ralph. So if you'd like to do that right at this panel, it's a perfect time to keep the party going. Welcome to Atlanta. Thank you, man. It's, uh, it's a home away from home right now. Um, Atlanta is the home of where we make the Cobra Kai series, so... We call it, I call it Cobra California, <laughs> since it's supposed to be the San Fernando yeah. Valley and, and we kind of don't have any mountains and palm trees, but uh, at least in this area, but we make, it, we make it work. It goes to show you that if, you, if the story's good, the characters are working, you know, you could just make it in Georgia. That's it, man. Yeah. <laughs> we have a bunch of people here to ask some questions, but I'm going to start with the very first question, because I've been told this, the original car from Karate Kid, I was told that that was gifted to you after that movie and that you still have that. Yes, not only do I still have that 47 Ford convertible, the wax on, wax off car, it is in the Cobra Kai series. It's yep. in Atlanta right now. I should have, you know, I should have brought it out, drove it, driven it out on stage. <laughs> See, that's, you know, that's a, like if it was a DeLorean and Back to the Future, I could have, uh, that's what I should do. Next panel, I'll drive the car out onto the stage. Oh, it's but it's here in Atlanta now because we use it in the Cobra Kai series. Yeah. It's always parked outside Miyagi's house. Excellent. And that's the original one. It's the original car. The original. And they, the, the production of, um, of Cobra Kai, they, the, the producers did such a great job. And, you know, because it was kind of not running and sitting on four flats in New York in, one of my, in a garage. <laughs> and we, uh, we resuscitated it and brought it back to life and put a new engine in it, sort of like me in this whole franchise. <laughs> Thanks. All right, let's go to our first question right over here. Is it on? Sorry. All right. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, part of why I like the series so much is it gives uh, an idea of the, the villain or the antagonist story when we got to see your story and everything like that. Uh, can you think of any story that you like where you would like to see the villain or the antagonist from their point of view? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, you know, it's interesting what informed my personal decision to move forward with Cobra Kai when I had heard the initial pitch idea is the movie Creed, the original movie Creed had just come out. And I just thought it was really interesting how you took the perspective and went into the Rocky universe from the perspective of, you know, Apollo Creed's kids. So now you're learning another side of the story. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many... God, you think of some of the great villains in cinema. God, he's not alive anymore, but, like, Hans Gruber in Die Hard. I want... I mean, the, the, you know, that... The, um, uh, boy, wouldn't it be interesting to know how he became what he became? But uh, um, I, I, that just comes off the top of my head. I mean, there's so many. There's so many. But it's, it has to be done carefully. It has to be done... Um, with what the guys do with, with Cobra Kai, where there's, there's gray areas with everyone. So not every single, you know, Karate Kid was very black and white, good over evil. You know, Miyagi, great, Kreese, bad, Johnny Lawrence, a jerk, Daniel Russo, the hero. And then you start flipping, you start peeling away and saying, well, maybe he acted this way and maybe this guy just got a raw deal or had the wrong sensei and what if they reverse roles would the paths have been different and that is therein lies where the success of Cobra Kai 
work. So I don't know. Let's keep lining up the villains and come up with hero stories for them. You know. Love it. Excellent. Next question. Um, which JoJo would you personally rather be in, Miyagi-Do, Cobra Kai, or Eagle Fang? That's not even a question. <laughs> but I appreciate the question. I am so Miyagi-Do for life, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, listen, the Mr. Miyagi, that character, the great Pat Morita and that amazing performance, Without it, we're not here today. With the show. You've had such a cultural impact, Karate Kid. I mean, it's been around for different generations, and it's been reintroduced to new generations. When you were filming it, the original one was, was the 84, I think. Yeah. And did you realize the impact? I mean, we're talking about this 40 years later. People are still as passionate about this film. They love it. Yeah, I mean, we didn't know at that time. I, we, we did not. I mean, I, I would love to say, yeah, I knew it then. I knew in 2023 I'd be hanging out with my friends in Atlanta talking about why this is still the most relevant thing out there. Um, no, I mean, I think what, from my perspective at that point, and I, I have a book, uh, and I'm going to do the shameless plug, but I have a book out now called Waxing On, The Karate Kid and Me, uh, which is available if anyone wants to read it. It is all these stories. It is me and that journey of, of, uh, of it, you know, of, of discovering it as it goes. And so we didn't, we knew we were making something fun and good. The relevance over decades time, I mean, that's just been the gift that keeps on giving. It's yep. just really amazing. This has been super fun, but you guys, I think, do you want to just take it to the next yeah, we level? we got to bring the real stars out onto the stage, I have a feeling. Check it out, everybody, William Zapka and Martin Go. All right, I'll see you later. Everybody, Ralph Lascio. Thank you. Apparently, I didn't get the sunglasses memo. Wow, it's super bright in here. Isn't that so typical Cobra Kai to come in late, <laughs> get that at the moment? So, welcome, guys. Welcome to Atlanta. We're excited to have you here. Thank you. We have some questions over here. Go ahead. Go ahead and start with your question. Uh, yeah, so uh, one thing I love so much about Cobra Kai is that these adult characters that uh, you know were introduced years ago, they're fully actualized people. They've had experiences on screen and off screen that changed them, made them who we love. But you still have that, you still have those traits that we fell in love with all those years ago. You can still see, uh, you can still see the pluckiness, the courage, the principles, all of that. So uh, it's kind of an acting question. How do you, how, how do you keep infusing that? How do you maintain what people fell in love with all those years ago and still make this new? fully actualized character that people still have learned to love, you know? I'm talked out. Go up. You did it? I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my bad. Just, no, uh, no, hey, no, I know. Hey, how, do you, how do we keep, how do we keep the, 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 draw the line from the first movie to now and keep them the same guys but with new experiences, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, well, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, first of all, we are these characters in the sense that a piece of us are in these characters, so we just bring that to the table ourselves. Um, and I think what's been really fun about the show is there's been 30 years, 30 some years since the movie. So it's not like it was right, you know, Karate Kid 3 and then it's the next day. This is 30 years that we get to build all this backstory and all this new stuff. So in a sense, they're brand new characters. Like, you know, we're not the same as we were when we were 17, 18 years old as people. So, um, but we have the same core and stuff. So um, that's one thing we do is we fight for the truth of who these, these characters were and who they are now. And um, you just put your heart into it. The writing's great. And then when you get to work with, you know, the same guys that we, we did the movie with, it's, uh, it's kind of natural. It just kind of shows up. Um, Johnny's in me. I know Daniel's in, in Ralph and Marty actually is John Kreese. <laughs> Excellent. Next question. Um, I have a question mainly for Billy. Um, I watched you in How I Met Your Mother, and in that you talked a lot about being booed. Wait, say were that you, again? Were you actually... Hmm? Yeah, 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 no, I can hear you. Were you actually uh, booed a lot in real life? For, Was I what for in real life? Booed, yeah. Uh, it's sorry, it's echoing so much. I'm really not Can kidding. I can't really hear. Um, I watched you a lot in How I Met Your Mother, and in that you talked a lot about being booed. 
where you oh, about being booed, booed in real life. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Did I get booed in real life? No, I mean, it's all comedy. I mean, I guess there was, you know, there was the underlying um, kind of universal boo at Johnny Lawrence uh, that kind of reverberated. But no, that was quite an exaggeration, quite a, that was the writers having a lot of fun with, with you know, my legacy. I mean, it was because I played a lot of, it wasn't just Karate Kid, but, you know, in the 80s, I played a, a series of bad guys. Um, you know, just one of the guys back to school in European vacation. Um, they didn't tell me they were the bad guys. I thought they were all the heroes. But when I saw the movies, I'm like, wait, these guys are kind of jerks. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I never got really booed in real life uh, like that. But that was super fun. It was a really blown out, exaggerated version of somebody's take on me and how I would, re you know, feel about my career and my life and stuff. It was super fun. We had a great time on that, especially The Bachelor Party was my favorite episode with uh, Ralph. I have my backpack. Okay. I got well, a question I, here. Oh. Yes, right here. <laughs> Martin Coe. <laughs> and he's out and he's with a vengeance. Oh, man. John Kreese. <laughs> That's actually a good question. I have, I have to ask you a question, um, uh, Marty. When you played your character, did you play him as a good guy just doing maybe questionable things or did you play him being a kind of an evil character because we love your character we love to yes. hate that character and we just want to know how Very you, much. what was in your mind when you were playing that character well i think the first time i ever had to do something like that and answer that question for myself was i had to play an assistant to it was the right hand man to ayatollah khomeini and i said to myself what do i have in common with this man who's literally a judge and jury in this movie we were doing about, you know, 1979 in Iran. And how do I identify with this guy? There was no way that I could be this person. I had no American values, this character. He hated everything. If you wore a red shirt, you were condemned, you know. And I got behind it and I just basically said, you, you have to convince yourself that you're being a hero in this case, I was being a hero to my people. So, you know, Cobra Kai, you're being a hero with moral fiber to the students. And, you know, Ralph has to learn that, and so does Billy, you know? I mean, at different levels. But you have to acknowledge that you're morally correct, and you have to communicate this to your peers and to your students, because you know better. Excellent, excellent. All right, next question over here. Hey guys, I love what you do. Uh, hope y'all liked y'all's gift yesterday, so we'll get into more of that later. So I'll see y'all in a little bit, but my question is to all three of you. So Cobra Kai season six is the last season, so this was my question on this. So um, since the kids are gonna have a tournament of their own and defend a karate championship, could the senseis also have their tournament of their own to decide uh, who is the All Valley champion of both of what the outcome is from the, the kids tournament to have a sensei tournament. And I just wanted to get y'all opinion on that and see what y'all think how the outcome would be. Well, I mean, we haven't, uh, they're just starting to write, uh, our creators in the, the writer's room just opened up about two weeks ago, I think. So they're just laying out the, uh, you know, the roadmap for what, what the final season of the series will be. And they're constantly surprising us. Um, and there's, uh, if I thought, you know, when I started season one that I would be facing off Terry Silver in season, season five, <laughs> I would say, what? Seriously? Like twice in one season? So, I mean, I'm really, you know, we're all open uh, to that. I mean, the kids are just, the young cast of the show is so, are so spectacular. They're such great actors, and they've uh, brought so much to their characters and put so much work in on the physical part of it that they're, they've become martial artists, and they're damn younger, so they could <laughs> jump a little higher and <laughs> a little bit more flexible, but there's always room for the OGs to scruff it up a bit, I'm sure. Um, so, you know, your guess is as good as mine, but we're open to it all. I think that's how we go into it every season. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Next question. 
Your first reaction. So this uh, question is directed mostly to Mr. Cove and also for William um, in particular, but Ralph, chime in um, to, to kind of go off of some of the other questions. Over your career playing these characters, um, we see there's now new kids who are watching this who are, uh, you know, attached to these characters and these ideologies. How over the years has Strike Hard or Strike First, Strike Hard, No Mercy, Cobra Kai Never Dies, how has that changed for you as you've gotten these new life experience? What does that mean to you? And what do you want these kids to take away from that? That's a very good question for William Zapka. To well, <laughs> thanks, Ralph. <laughs> I think it's in the show. I mean, J Johnny's evolving in the show. He opened up Cobra Kai originally, and all he's spit firing everything he ever heard. You know, man is on the streets, your enemy, your enemy deserves no mercy. He's basically stepping out of, of uh, he, the, the crust is falling off him, and he's stepping into being a sensei again. And all he knows is Cobra Kai. That's how he learned. And as he's seeing how that's playing out, but he's trying to be different. He's putting his heart into it. So as he's going on, he's seeing that um, sometimes we show mercy. And actually, you know, strike first, strike hard. He points to the chalkboard, you know, that, you know, sometimes this is true, but if you take this literally, then you're really just an asshole. So he's, you know, and so strike first, strike hard. You know, we, we write that. I sometimes don't want to write that on my pictures because it's like, it's really not what I want to say to the kids. I don't want the kids to go out and go, you know, Johnny said strike first, dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there's a little responsibility I have with that. I'm really happy with the evolution of Johnny's thinking and kind of waking up and then realizing, well, first of all, Kreese comes and steals Cobra Kai out from under him because it's rightfully his. And now Johnny has to open Eagle Fang Karate. And, uh, you know, so he, his, 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 um, and then now he's, he's um, with Daniel and they're and learning a defensive style. And so there's a lot of evolution going on. So I think for me, the actor, like Strike First, Strike Hard died at the Karate Kid tournament in the original movie when he says sweep the leg, and I see that, oh wait, I've been taught wrong all these years. So for me, actually, to pull it back out again 30 years later and play Johnny Lawrence and do it, I'm like, wait, why, you know, why am I opening Pandora's box? Why don't I just open a new karate studio? Why does it have to be Cobra Kai? Didn't I learn my lesson? Um, didn't Johnny, <laughs> didn't I? See how the lines are blurred? <laughs> so it's an evolution, you know? I think there's a balance. I think there's something to that strike first, strike hard as a mentality. Marty could speak to that more because uh, his backstory and where his character was in Vietnam and the mentality that he has, um, there's a lot of, there's a reason for that that's valid, but it does need balance. Right. So, you and know, not too much balance, but just, but balance. Yeah, just enough. No, and to, to that same point, you know, what the, the, the writers were able to do over the evolution, which is the right word here, over um, the course of the Cobra Kai series is, you know, even for LaRusso and I think season four when uh, um, Johnny and, and, and Daniel both trade off on their training and you see LaRusso in a situation where striking first was, you know, served him in a way. And you begin to open up your eye, your close, you know, your preconceived notions to, okay, so this is where this works. And then you find that balance, which has always been at the base of foundation of Miyagi's, you know, uh, teachings, uh, how to, how to navigate all different scenarios as opposed to it only being black or white. There's a lot of gray, and that's, that's part of the show as well. With all these characters, um, there's, there's a little good, there's a little bad, there's a, lots of learning to do. And, and one of the things I always think of when I'm subtextually writing this to kids, like strike first, strike hard doesn't also necessarily mean punch first, punch hard. Like that means get a goal, get up, strike first, be the first one, strike hard, have no mercy, sacrifice some things in your life, go after something that's tough, face your challenges, strike first, go at it with a strong mind. So that's, that's also what I'm kind of saying too and projecting. I'm glad I get to clear that up. Please tell all the children. <laughs> I, I think it's all, everybody's just saying the same thing. It's, it's all evolution of those, that dialogue. And it's all interesting because now you see the characters in 50 hours of these characters versus two hours that you saw in Karate Kid 1, which established the values and the instruction. So now all those lines, I think for all of us as actors, have evolved into little shaded meanings, you know, more subtle meanings. And it, it has for John Kreese, and, and Johnny's 
Johnny's gone up and down, you know, and Ralph's been steady with those values. But for the actor, I think for yourself, I think it, it evolves differently. And, you know, sometimes that has a tail end to it. And sometimes it's got an exclamation point, you know? Excellent. Good question. Thank you. Next question. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, hi. I'm actually about, I'm getting ready to test for my fifth degree black belt. And one of the people that I trained with when I was younger is, has been in like all of the um, or dojos in the show. So I was just wondering if there was any martial art moment or any moment in particular that got you interested in starting the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai series? Um, not specifically. I mean, this, the Cobra Kai series, the concept to the show came to us from three wonderful writers who, who create the show. And, um, you know, they, it was their brain trust, the whole concept of how to re-enter the Karate Kid universe and not make, you know, just Karate Kid 4 or 5 or 6, you know, is finding its own, um, own unique angle into another chapter. So, um, but as we worked on, you know, in the series and worked with our st the stunt coordinators and martial arts coordinators, it was about defining all the different... Uh, um, styles of martial arts and um, you know that that's been that's been the most rewarding to me in this chapter of it is defining in a fight when Billy and I had uh, sort of the rematch in in season four we were really defining two totally different fighting styles um, and and they were evident in just our stances and how and how we went about it so um, it's always there's the evolution word again. It's always forever evolving as we, as we create going forward. I don't know if that answered the question, but. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question. Hey, guys. How's it going? Um, so I have a little bit of a request. But, um, so you know when Johnny's always saying quiet to his students, uh, in season four we see a moment where Daniel's just saying it to Anthony. Ralph? I was wondering if you could shout quiet, just like Johnny does to his students. <laughs> wow, that was putting you on the spot. Who's yelling quiet? Uh, you. <laughs> Me. Yeah. I can't, first of all, you know, there are certain lines of dialogue. You Rocky, yo Adrian, <laughs> you got De Niro, you talking to me. You got M Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off. You don't touch him. To that point, you can't compete with William Zapp because Johnny Lawrence is quiet. <laughs> now, I could either give it my best shot and fall way below the brilliance or maybe, maybe change a few people's minds. So I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> I gotta stand up for this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just wait and my friend settle here. Hi. Quiet! <laughs> it's the best I can do. I think it was per I saw people, they actually jumped in their seats, so I think you, you got him. That was brilliant, thank you. From the gut. It's just from the gut. The, 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 the quiet is, you know, when you, in karate, there's a thing called the ki, I know you've heard it, I do it all the time, yeah, yeah. But, the, it, you know, the, the, really the reason for that is it comes from your belly. It's like, Ugh, it's from down here. And it's, it's to give you power, and it also is to throw off the guy that you're punching. So when I first saw quiet, I remember we did the rehearsal way back before we were even making the thing. The first time we read it through with John, and I saw quiet, and I'm like, all right, I just got to go for this, because they have it in capitals with like three exclamation points. Like, they didn't. So, you know, and so it just comes from the belly. So everybody go home and try it in the mirror. It's really effective if done correctly. <laughs> Excellent. Next question. How's it going, guys? Uh, Good, it's been so great to get to see you guys here and get to talk with each and every one of you. Uh, so thank you for being here. Um, so my question is for all three of you. Uh, with season five obviously being the craziest season we've ever seen with all the twists and turns and surprises, when you guys got the scripts, is there one thing that surprised each of you the most that was like, wow, didn't see that coming? In the, in the fifth season? In the fifth yeah. 
<laughs> I know there's a lot. Uh, I, I was amazed that Jello was. Yeah, I was going to say uh, Jello is a good one. Jello was the essence of my freedom. And how you don't have a Jello commercial on the air right now? <laughs> I, you know, we've pitched them, but they think John Kreese might have eaten very dark Jello. <laughs> you know, but. Jello was interesting, the whole concept of Jello, but I, I actually loved all the scenes with the psychologist and all that. I like all that. You know, contrary to, you know, the kind of roles I play, I really like doing those vulnerable moments and, you know, tearful situations. So I really enjoyed that very much when they wrote that in, you know, and um, it just was uh, so much fun to play. So different. And then when we play our scene in the prison, I really like that. And sometimes, you know, because we have such a good time acting together that even if it's a page or it's three pages, it doesn't matter because we really have such a history. And the audiences, like yourselves, read in the history of these characters as we're acting. You know, you can have two, three lines and yet everybody's into the scene as an audience member. So I just like when they do that, when they write vulnerably with lots of texture instead of, you know, mercy is for the weak, you know. Excellent. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. Our next question. Uh, first off, I'm super glad to be here, but this is really for any or all of you. Um, you. You talk so much about evolution. What have been some of the moments in this show that kind of punctuated you guys' growth that you guys like really enjoyed, like they punctuated your character's growth throughout the entire show. Um, God, there's so there's so many. I mean, it's you know, Marty mentions the quiet moments. You know, this you know, Cobra Kai is such an action series, and it's bigger and more badass every year, and it's twists and turns and and surprises. But it 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 are it is most often for me the grounded moments in characters that go back to the essence of the Karate Kid of it all, meaning the Karate Kid movie of it all. So for me, a lot of that stuff is the Miyagi stuff, um, this stuff that, that um, you know, in season f uh, five, walking into the room with Courtney, uh, who plays Amanda, and going into Miyagi's uh, uh, room there, he hasn't been there in decades, and sort of re-experiencing being back there and, and the pain that goes with that, but then also this sort of um, uh, pulling together of, of everyone to uh, get behind LaRusso moving forward when he's at a dark time. Uh, th those are the moments, um, you know, connecting, looking in, in Billy's eyes and Johnny Lawrence's eyes when we, we connect and we've lived this life together as these characters and from two totally different perspectives and two different sensibilities but with the same good intentions going forward. That stuff is rich. It's emotional to play. Sometimes I get emotional just just looking at these two guys because we've, it's just amazing between Ralph, Marty, and Billy what we've gone through, let alone with Johnny, uh, Johnny, uh, Daniel and, and Chris have gone through, and it's it's really that's the richest uh, stuff for me in the show because it grounds it doesn't forget where it all came from amid all the fun you know zany insane fight sequences. And, and, it, and it tell you, and it plays from an outsider the promo when they look at each other. Do you remember when you look at each other in the promo? You're outside and the kids are waiting for some sort of guidance, and the two of you, it's, it's a wonderful moment where you, you don't know what you're gonna do next, but you look to each other for, are we ready, you know? I mean, you look at him, he looks at you, and it was in the promo, and it was so rich because there was no dialogue, nothing but two characters who were joining forces to defeat the monster, and uh, you know, it was so rich, and it's those moments that are filled with history, you know, for all of us, because we've been, you know, through movies and TV shows. So that's what counts, honestly. The, the depth is, is really deep for your, for your guys' show. Billy, there's that scene, I can't remember if it's the second or third season, when you get reunited with your friends. 
and yeah. you do the road trip. That was actually very emotional. Yeah, for sure. I was just gonna say, piggyback on both of what they're saying because it's like there's been. I think first of all, I love the I love the '80s of it. I love the I love the stuck in the '80s version of that. I think there's something great about those times that we need today. And I love that I get to be sort of a conduit for that and a, and a messenger from the past. <laughs> you know, there's just a simpler thing, you know, it's raw. he's kind of thick headed, of course, but um, and I love the drama of it. But I think the, the discovery of like when Ralph and I did our first scene in the dojo when he came in for the first time and Ralph and I have been friends for a long time, decades. And all of a sudden it was the first time he walked in as Daniel LaRusso and I'm there in character as Johnny and we rehearsed it. But when the cameras were rolling, it was like, we just knew like this is actually really happening. Like, oh shit, that's Daniel Russo. And he's like, oh shit, that's Johnny Lawrence. And everybody behind the camera is like biting their knuckles. We're like, wow, this is, we really have something, you know? And then when he walks in at the end and he walks in, the, I mean, that was like one of my favorite moments ever to play anything when he walks in at the end after the tournament and he walks in and just says his line and I'm looking at it, I feel like I'm seeing a ghost because I think he's dead. So, you know, and, and Johnny really does think he's dead. He hasn't seen him for years. But the discovery and like the guys, your OGs, I think, for all of us working with, you know, for Tamlin, for Ralph, and for, you know, all of the characters, there's, it's like, it's like um, bumping into an old friend you haven't seen for years, and like you, 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 you connect on this level, and you have this instant history and this instant chemistry, and you don't get to do that. I mean, there's just, I don't know any projects that get to do what we're doing like that. I mean, except Star Wars with Luke, you know, and uh, that, you know, I mean, so it's really been, as an actor, it's been really thrilling. And then all the new people. So I think it's, uh, yeah, the discovery and working with those guys. And I did, you know, those guys were my best friends. I mean, after Karate Kid, we hung out all the time. We went to Big Bear. We used to camp in Big Bear. The, that scene in, the, in Cobra Kai was real. Like, we did that, you know, so it was really natural to do. And um, it's, been, it's been awesome. So I think that, that all keeps it grounded. Then the music and everything else. And, um, it's a, it's a very rare experience we're having and, and we're all sharing it and that, that's really cool for us. Like, that's why we come here. We get to meet you guys and see how it's impacting you and, you know, and I love hearing the stories of like, I signed up for karate or I'm not drinking as much beer or I changed to Coors Banquet. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, have y'all started <laughs> filming um, the new season of Cobra Kai? Say that one more time, sorry. Uh, um, have y'all ever started uh, filming the new season of Cobra Kai? Uh, no, we're they're they're writing it. They're writing the scripts now, and we're supposed to start in Atlanta in the, probably this spring. I think May is the pencil plan to get started. So I can't wait. Excellent. Next question. Uh, my question is more for William, but I guess anyone could answer it. Johnny says really off-the-wall things sometimes, and I was just wondering, what is the hardest scene to film simply because it was too funny? Like, you had to do rest several retakes just because it was too funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I don't know. I don't play him funny. That's what's funny about him, I think. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't know he's funny. He just sees a certain way, you know. There's a, the tri you know, in, in acting, if comedy is like, there's, it's called the blind obsession as an actor. Like you're, you, you're blind to, you're blind to yourself, and everybody else gets to peer in and see his, his, the spot. So, I don't know. We, I'll tell you the time that was the funniest time on the set that we couldn't stop laughing. It was with Ralph and Carmen, oh God, with, yes, man, yes. with, uh, with uh, Vanessa and uh, Courtney in the Mexican restaurant scene. And we got the giggles. I mean, we were eating chips, and I think it was because we were talking about, what was it? Oh, Dojo uh, dojos, yeah. The, like, the uh, word dojo, like, all like, of a sudden, you know, like when you're a kid and you, yeah, you just like, say some word and it just doesn't sound right, yeah. and then you start yeah, like, laughing so, yeah, at it. Yeah, we were just it. saying, my dojo, my dojo is better than your dojo. We were just talking about the, <laughs> you know, and, we, were, and we were like, shit, like we five year old so, kindergartens. They, they were, we even laughed they, they, so hard they had to shut the cameras down and they were yeah. mad at us. We had, I had to walk outside and laugh it off, and they're like, come on, man, time is money. I'm like, I can't. Can't stop laughing. It was, <laughs> it was truly the. It was giggles. one of this, right? Wasn't that so? It funny? was crazy, and I was the last one. I was like, it's you know, Mister Professional. I was holding it together, and then finally, when I was down, it was over. It it's was like, like I, yeah, I just could not hold it. The absurdity of the situation just hit us. Like, here's two grown men sitting across the table from each other, that like talking about whose dojo is yeah. better, <laughs> trying to impress her. It's just so immature and so stupid. Occasionally, we do that. Even yeah. uh, every season, sometimes Billy yeah, and I yeah. just look at each other and we just say, "Are you going to say this? Are we saying this out loud? Yeah. Is this is this really that important? Yeah. You know, maybe we should just move and take up a different sport." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next question. Hey, all. Thank you very much for being here. We all appreciate it. Um, questions for each of you individually for Ralph. Um, huge, huge fan for everything. But um, out of everything that Mr. Miyagi taught you in the film, what can you apply, or what have you applied in the wisdom that he's given you back then to your day-to-day -day life now? And for Billy, um, how do you feel about your character having more, you know, evolutionary development and not just being a, you know, hollow or kind of crusty guy? And, and for Marty, can we expect to see even less mercy in season six? Well, I'll answer the first. Can we expect to see even less mercy towards Silver, especially in season oh, towards six? Silver, yeah, unquestionably. <laughs> <laughs> unquestionably. Um, she just, is Crease. You know, honestly, you know how that evolved was back in Karate Three Days. I got a TV series and I couldn't play that movie. Everything that was written for Terry Silva was written for John Kreese. And I couldn't do that because I got a TV series. So what's really funny is oh that God. now there's a Terry Silva 40 years later on the show and he, he's only in existence because Martin Cove is unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's right. That's true. Super true. Okay, that's enough of that question. Okay. All right, so I'll get back to the Miyagiism that I use in my regular life. Um, I would say uh, um, the one that's always held true to me is uh, walk left side safe, walk right side safe, walk middle gets squished like grape. Um, it's kind of, I use that, um, it's almost like the only bad choice is no choice, don't waffle down the middle, mm, commit to something, even if, it, if that path leads to not be the right choice at the moment, at least you've explored that, where when you're waffling down the middle, you're not m moving forward. And, um, and so that's the one that I, among the many great Miyagi-isms, that's probably the one I've used the most. And for me, what's it like to be what? <laughs> uh, just how, how do you feel more about your character having more evolutionary development and not just being oh. Johnny Lawrence the rest Not of just being the hero, but like actually yeah. seeing under a <laughs> yeah, hood? Yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> well, listen, I carry the torch of being the, the taking the crane kick. Like, you know, Ralph experienced the movie totally different than I did. He was at the movie theater premiere. He watched everybody jump on their feet. And they're like, wow, shit, they're rooting for me. I had the opposite thing happen for me, right? Nobody was doing the crane kick uh, head snap in the parking lot. <laughs> so, like, nobody was practicing hitting their ass, you know, on the ground. So, I, so it's been super awesome to, to come in and, and just to to act him and to play la levels and layers and stuff. I mean, at the core of Johnny, at the core, if you sh to strip it all away, he, he had no dad, he had a really shitty stepdad, and a mom who he misses, who wasn't able to stand up for him. And so his whole life he's been on a journey to find the father figure, you know, and find a family. And so, you know, and it was him, but it's like this abusive love-hate relationship. He still loves Crease, it's just that, how many times can you get hit in the face? I mean, and he's, how many times are you gonna try to choke me out and kill me? In his way, it's love. It's like two pit bulls fighting. It's not like, in, he doesn't mean it, I hope. I don't mean it. Uh, <laughs> but mercy is for the weak. And, uh, but I think what's, what's, what, what helps the character evolve is in his relationships. And he found, the, you know, he was just a shell. He was just closed up and watching Iron Eagle and eating bologna. And he finds this kid who he stands up for and probably would have ended it that if he didn't bump into this guy at the dealership and feel humiliated. Now he's got to go do something and go and open this dojo. But he's finding himself. He's finding a kid that he's getting to be a father to. And he found a lady that, that accepts him for who he is. I mean, the love about Carmen is that she's, there's no judgment of Johnny. She, she accepts him. And the more we learn about her, the more they're alike, which is kind of cool. So at the end of all this, it's like there's Karate Kid, there's karate, there's action and all that. But it's, it's, I think what's really resonating with people is about people, it's about humanity, it's about growing up and finding your, your love and your balance and your truth and all that. So um, the journey and the evolution of Johnny is cool. I, I, like, 
you know, I don't need him to fully evolve. I mean, I don't think anybody really fully evolves. I think we're all a work in progress, and I hope he doesn't land fully on his feet. I hope he lands a little bit on his head with a beer in his hand and goes, shit, was that a dream? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna have time. We have time for so one much. more question. I just have to ask, though, in your character, it's just, let's just get this out of the way. Was that final kick, was that an illegal kick? Was it a legal kick? Yeah. Let's Who's not go there, please. Trying to, <laughs> Ralph and I have been through years of therapy. The go ahead. We've been through years of therapy to deal with this very issue. I, I no, know. No, no. It's, um, it wasn't illegal. It's, what, it's whatever yeah. keeps the ball up in the air and makes you guys happy. That's what it is. <laughs> All right, our final question right here. Can you say anything about the villain and about season six? About the what? Villain and season six. The villain of season six. Um, I, we haven't read, we haven't seen what season six actually is. We have, a, a, you know, we know the direct, the general direction of the overall A storyline, but we don't have, uh, they just, like I mentioned, they just started uh, writing and we're, we're waiting to uh, get a, have our first meeting of hearing where we're going. That's, uh, that's just the way, you know, it works. The whole writing staff gets together and they kind of map it out. So we're waiting like you are. We're the, we're the fans that you are. We just get to play in the sandbox. <laughs> Can you guys please give a huge round of applause Harry, for Martin, Billy, and Ralph. That video was delicious and good for you too. I know I'm a doctor and I'm also poor, which is hellaciously funny because you'll never see a poor doctor. Trust me and subscribe already. Have fun and eat another video.